Try to hack me. Try hack me. Why use more words when less do trick? All right, I think it's safe to say there's no secret, there's no leak or anything with this, uh, but Try Hack Me had reached out to me and my group of ragtag hackers and friends asking if we would be able to jump in on a contract to be able to create some challenges that would go on the Try Hack Me platform. We had a lot of different categories that we would create challenges and content for, and I think we made about like three dozen or so. So those will slowly trickle out over time, and hopefully you'll be able to catch either my name or some good friend's name on any of the Hey Room Made by section in a Try Hack Me room. This first one that was released was called Agent T, put together by my great friend Black Note. You can find him online, and all the kudos and credit and props goes to him for this nice room. And actually, if you go take a look at tryhackme.com even now, as this video is uploaded, and released, there is a new machine, uh, Jump Box, put together by Congenator, which is super duper cool, gets into some Kubernetes hacking and lots of fun stuff. But to get our feet wet, this first machine that we get to start with is a rated easy machine where it's a nice interesting gimmick, something cool to learn about with PHP, but something to certainly start the momentum for some of the tougher, more advanced or different things that you might play with in other challenges. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. But wait, before we dive in, please allow me to include a message from today's sponsor. If you've seen my videos before, then you know that I showcase a lot of Capture the Flag challenge write-ups. Capture the Flag, or CTFs, are an awesome way to build your cybersecurity skills, learn about vulnerabilities, exploits, and just have fun all along the way. But it can be hard to get started with CTF challenges if you're a beginner. You just get dropped into some mysterious environment, and it's basically like, good luck. It's wild, I guess I got started with CTFs about like eight years ago. It's a lot of trial by fire, research in the moment, and just learning as you go and you get exposed to new technologies. So if you're looking to get started with Capture the Flag, but you don't know where to begin, check out Sneak's CTF 101 workshop on September 14th, 2022 at 11 a.m. Eastern. You'll learn how to solve different Capture the Flag challenges across different categories like binary exploitation and web security, the Sneak team will walk through a live, step-by-step -step demo of how to solve a Capture the Flag challenge, what to look out for, what the tactics are, what techniques and tools you can use. And then in the hands-on part of the lab, you get to solve your first CTF challenge, and you'll have live support all along the way so you can ask questions as you go along. So join the workshop September 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's totally free, all online, and you can register right now using my link in the description below. It's going to be a ton of fun. I'm excited for it, and I hope to hear about all the awesome stuff you learn getting into the CTF 101 workshop. So this challenge is called Agent T, and the prompt here is Agent T uncovered this website, which looks innocent enough, but something seems off about how the server responds. After deploying the vulnerable machine attached to this task, please wait a couple of minutes for it to respond. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click the Start Machine button way up in the top right corner. I am connected to the VPN, so I should be able to access the machine once it spins up. Uh, and I'll hop over to my terminal where I have uh, a machine, or excuse me, a directory already created for... Uh, my work within Try Hack Me Machines and Rooms, so I will make a dedicated specific room to this simply called Agent T. I'll move into that directory and I'll get a silly readme.md created for us. I don't know if I'll actually end up doing anything with it, but hey, maybe it's good to uh, have that in case we do. And while that is getting situated, I will wait for this machine to be ready for me and we can get back to it once it's set. Okay, the machine has finished creating. I have the IP address up here, 10104959. 10, I'll go ahead and copy that to the clipboard, and I'll move back over to my command line, where what I'm going to do just to verify and test that I can access that is go ahead and ping it. Looks like I am seeing a response. My ICMP echo request is coming back with a reply, and I can validate that I am, in fact, able to reach the machine. So with that, let's go ahead and create an nmap directory so we can get started with the usual nmap command that we might run to go ahead and scan the machine. I'll use tacsc for default scripts, tacsv to enumerate versions, tac on to output in an nmap format. I'll slap it into that nmap directory with just about the name initial because I'm saying, hey, just a regular starting scan, and I will paste in the IP address here. Now, I could press V on my keyboard to turn verbosity on or increase it up to one. Granted, I probably should have added a tac v flag running that command so I would be able to see what new ports it's found as it has found them. Oh, whatever. Lessons learned for next time. Always something good to do here. But anyway, it looks like the scan has finished and we have one port open being port 80. 
That's port or the service representing for HTTP or the hypertext transfer protocol, and it's running a PHP server. Apparently, PHP CLI server 5.5 or later, PHP 8.1.0 TAC Dev, which is interesting. Seeing TAC Dev isn't something that I'm used to, but we can go interact with it and play with it. Uh, doesn't look like there is anything else for me to explore. So let me go ahead and grab that IP address. And since it's on port 80, I can simply go ahead and access it within my web browser. So I'll just create a new tab and open that up, 10104959. And this is the admin dashboard that I'm greeted with. Okay, looks kind of fancy. I see some components over here in the navigation or utilities or add-ons. Uh, but as I hover over each of these things, you'll notice if you'd look closely in the very, very bottom left, you note that it goes to a simple Octothorpe or the hashtag or the pound symbol that is just an anchor. It's not really taking me to a new page. In fact, literally as I click on each of these, they don't bring me anywhere other than back to this page. Maybe the 404 or the blank page seems to exist. Okay, there are a couple of them, but these are just static .html pages. So nothing that I could really interact with. HTML is just simply that hypertext markup language. There's nothing that I could play with. Looks like charts is a uh, endpoint or a URL landing that I'm not able to actually access. So this is a legitimate 404 not found. So I'm gonna move back. I press Alt left arrow key on my keyboard. And with that, I don't think there's a whole lot for me to be able to play with. Oh, even the dashboard doesn't seem to come back with index. How did I get here? Let me just go straight back to 10104959, removing the index.html. Okay. Uh, generate report doesn't seem to do anything. None of these notifications seem to take me anywhere, and I can't make, make them go away. So that looks kind of fudged. <laughs> okay. Am I a good boy, chicken the dog? Uh, you know what? I probably shouldn't be the one you can ask. Going to profile takes me nowhere. Settings takes me nowhere. Activity log takes me nowhere. So this looks like it's just kind of a dud. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and view page source or hit control U on my keyboard. This will allow me to view the HTML itself to see, oh, are there any other pages that I'm missing or are there any HTML comments that I'm not seeing? But... All of this just looks like notes for the developer. I'm looking at the green uh, less than exclamation point hyphen hyphen comments here. Uh, and there's no secret note or messages or to do's that are left behind for de developers. It's, it's just boilerplate stuff that I can't really interact with more other than it being raw generic HTML. So I don't have a whole lot of options here. Uh, if, if you run out of this, you might very well go ahead and fire up GoBuster or a brute forcing utility to go to, oh, uh, Durbuster or Derb or Feroxbuster if you're, if you're into that Rust scene. We could check if there's a robots.txt file, but that doesn't exist. Uh, we could check if there's a dot slash well-known directory that might have some things. No, no, no security.txt or anything specific within there. So maybe we could check for like a sitemap.xml or any of those other places, but there is nothing else really here for me to look at. So what I'll go ahead and do is actually open up uh, my developer tools in my browser. So I'll right click, or excuse me, uh, if you right click and you wanted to inspect, you'll open that up on the, the right hand pane here. However, you can move it to display anywhere else you might like. Uh, but hitting F12 on my keyboard will do the very, very same. Now I have this open in the network tab here and it, I want to be able to see, okay, what HTTP, HTTP requests are going in and out as I load this page. You can filter on all endpoints that you receive or specific JavaScript files or CSS or images, etc. Uh, but we need to make sure that this is opened while I'm receiving traffic to be able to display it here. So you will need to refresh by hitting control R or F5 on your page to do that. I'm going to hit control shift R. So I'm not worried about the cache. And now you can see I have a lot of things that funnel through here. And each of these might come with specific request or response headers as they go across the wire. Now going just to this original page, going to 10104959 as the IP address, note one of the response headers way down here is this X powered by 
value. This is pretty common for PHP web servers. Uh, you might very well just see it in Nginx or Apache or other HTTP web servers. And it tells you, oh, what version of PHP that you're running or how this server and service is powered by in the language and version of PHP. Now, you'll remember that I kind of picked up on this 8.1.0 TAC dev because that TAC dev is odd to me. You don't normally see that, especially in something that could be quote unquote in production, right? So what I want to do is I want to Google this PHP 8.1.0 dev and ooh, right away in the first couple results, I see some notion of exploit db.com and potential remote code execution vulnerabilities or things that could be taken advantage of. It looks like there are even GitHub scripts or repositories that already weaponized this. So we could play with it. Let me go take a look at what this exploit db thing showcases. And if you aren't familiar with exploit db, exploit database is a uh, database, right, of, of uh, already publicly available exploits or code that you might be able to use to take advantage of a vulnerability. So this is specific to PHP 8.1.0 dev, and it's called user agent T or agent with two T's remote code execution. Considering the name of this challenge, this sounds like we are in the right place here. Uh, and there's a note, an early release of PHP, the 8.1.0 dev version was released with a backdoor on March 28th, 2021, but the backdoor was quickly discovered and removed. If this version of PHP runs on a server, an attacker can execute arbitrary code by sending the user agent T or with two headers, uh, two T, sorry, he HTTP header. The following exploit uses the backdoor to provide a pseudo shell on the host. Oh. Do we just need, I see it here. This looks like all Python code, of course, right? And, we, and they're using the request module to be able to send this over. They kind of have a fake interactive shell. Um, but we are really just interested in this header, user agent with an extra T. And they run what looks like a system command, but it also has the word Zerodium in here. Is that a necessary function call? I want to do just a little bit more research because that's, really all what this is about, right? So let me go back and check out what this Flask 101 thing does. Ooh, this GitHub repository looks like it describes it a little bit more. Yep, okay, and there's a full article that discusses this. Here they use a proof of concept script. Oh, and this is probably the exact same thing that we saw on the exploit DB. Let me go see if I can go explore this blog post and just to get some quick learning about this. You might already be jumping the gun saying like, hey, let's go execute this thing. Let's go try it and let's go play with it. And I absolutely agree. I think we totally, totally should. Uh, but ooh, okay. There's a little bit more explanation telling me about what this is really doing. If you look at the source code that they reference here in what would have been part of the original commits and the back door of this version of PHP, they discuss, there's a line here, 370, which you can see at the bottom here, zend eval string. That function's called and the code actually plants a backdoor for obtaining easy remote code execution. Interesting. Sold to Zerodium. Zerodium is a zero day broker, by the way, for exploits. Uh, yeah, here we go. Washington based security firm that specializes in buying and selling zero day vulnerabilities for a variety of operating systems and popular desktops, etc. Uh, the line executes PHP code from within the user agent HTTP header if the string starts with Zerodium. Interesting. And this blog post explains it just a little bit more. So anyway, let's go ahead and play with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this code here. We can take the full thing. Select it all, copy and paste. Okay. Did this take in arguments? Oh no, it takes it in via input. So we specify the host. Uh, does that need the HTTP headers? It looks like it does. And let's try and run our exploit.py, entering the full host URL, 10, 10, 10, 4, 9, 5, 9. And theoretically we have a fake pseudo interactive shell. Can I run the ID command? I can, but we do have a shell using that script we can just grab off of exploit DB. And let's look around as to what might be here on this file system. We have a pseudo shell. So let's see, do we have, we don't have a flag present here. 
since we're in a pseudo shell, we can't exactly change directory easily. So let me just go and navigate to the root of the file system by simply listing the files in there. And there we go, I can see a flag.txt present. So that is what I wanna end up retrieving. And we can do that by simply the cat command, knowing the absolute path is that forward slash uh, flag.txt. So let me hit enter on that, and there is our flag. And that's what we want to go ahead and submit and validate that we have compromised this machine. Because we did, in fact, get a shell. If we wanted to, I don't know, make it a more stable, realistic shell rather than the pseudo shell that we're doing with just these back and forth requests, we could set that up with a, you know, netcat listener and do whatever we want to here. But in all reality, we've submitted and completed that room. And that's it. <laughs> We're done. That was Agent T. And that was it. I know it might seem kind of small and simple and trivial for some folks, but hey, that was how we could get the ball rolling and hopefully bring you a good amount of some interesting and fun challenges. There will be a couple of mine mixed in, but plenty of other of the other creators and challenge developers that I get to spend a whole lot of fun time with. And I hope you enjoyed. Uh, maybe it's still worthwhile doing a little bit of that research, doing a little bit of that digging and understanding, okay, what is up with this version of the software that I'm interacting with? PHP 8.1.0 TAC Dev? Cool. That's worth some Googling and learning on the fly to see what's up about it. But hey, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do that YouTube algorithm stuff. Like the video, comment, subscribe. There is a Patreon and PayPal link in the description if you're up for that. I'm super appreciative of all your generosity and support. And uh, that's it. <laughs> hey, uh, and the sponsor of this video, by the way, is one of the Sneak Capture the Flag 101 workshops. If you aren't already in the mix on that, you absolutely should be. Uh, please go check out the link in the description and go spend some time with those other incredible fellows at Sneak. It's going to be a ton of fun, and I hope you have a lot of fun there. Thanks so much, everybody. I love you. I'll see you in the next video.